Hello Capricorn, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Capricorn is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And look at that, the devil card. Um, it is your power card, so we have to ring the bell, right? Um, wonderful. This is, this is very, very good energy. It's not often we get the power card as the very first card. And I think that's really cool. And also, you may not have noticed we're using a different tarot pack today. Uh, it's still the Thoth deck, but this is the Millennium Thoth deck by Los Garabeo. Artist is uh, Renata Lechner. Um, uh, just trying a little experiment here, right? Just seeing how these cards may work. It, we may not use it every time. So th those of you that are kind of, um, you know, old school and, and traditional Dove and Serpent tarot folks, we're still going to use my kind of vintage, antique, well-worn Thoth deck here. But I thought we would try a little something different and see how these cards work. It's still the Thoth deck, right? Um, devil card. Um, I feel that you are someone right now who's very in touch with your creative energy. I feel like you're very focused on your path. You're somebody who, um, you've got this fiery ambition. I, it's like someone lit a fire under you um, because we are charging up this hill. And I feel that um, you're kind of, you're moving in with such force and you're moving so fast that it's like nothing's sticking to you, you know? We've got this kind of momentum to things right now. This is your driving force, right? It's your creative drive, it's your generative drive. Um, we've got to really keep this um, balanced though, right? Because this could become a drive toward pleasure, a drive toward aggression, right? So it's kind of like when we get to the, the further up the hill, when we get more toward the top of the mountain, right? It gets a little bit more narrow. There's less room for error. There's less room for mistakes, right? Um, because down at the bottom, it's kind of, well, you maybe pick a different path, you can try different things, and it's, there's a lot more choices at the bottom because it's wider at the base. But as we climb up that kind of pyramid structure, um, there, there are less choices. There is less room for error. There's more, it's kind of, we have to be more cautious it's the the balance is very is much more important when you're way high up uh like the stakes are higher for you now you know uh, i feel like you're somebody that lately you haven't been focused so much on your personal relationships it's kind of been i'm i'm doing me you know um that you've been and, and we've had this theme in a couple of your readings you're like turning up your own light you know, if you're shining brighter than everybody else well they just need to learn how to shine brighter right? Um, you're not turning your light down. And I, I always talk about this, like we're not dimming our shine, right? And then I realized that Lady Gaga said something like that. I don't know when she said it. Somebody posted a quote of hers where she said something about not to dim your shine. I don't know if I took it from her or she took it from me, but I'll have to have a chat with her. Um, but either way, she's right. You know, you're, you're turning up that energy. You're turning up your creative light, your confidence, uh, your charm and your charisma is just infectious right now. And I think <clears throat> we're saying, you know, if, if you're shining brighter than other people, then well, they just need to figure out what they need to do, right? But I feel like even the people that are around you can't help but feel inspired by you right now, okay? And again, balance. We need balance. We don't want to get carried away with this where we make mistakes or we get this turns into too much like pleasure seeking or aggression, right? Which are kind of the, the ways the devil energy could go. Yeah. So we want to keep this as something that is productive and we need to be generous with our energy and we need to stay balanced, but also focused and, because we're getting closer to the top and it's, it's getting more narrow. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, let's see what else is going on. This is, that's something else. That's really nice to get the first card out of the pack for you today. And of course, we've got the moon. And the moon, I think, is, um, we're going at, it's, it's like we're, go, we're headed to the top of that mountain, top of that pyramid. But, but, um, maybe it's shrouded in mist. Maybe there's some clouds at the top, you know? You ever watch these shows uh, about climbing Everest? There's one that was on Netflix. I think it was Everest. I think it was just called Everest. Um, but they, they wouldn't make that final push to the summit until they knew that the weather would be okay. They didn't want to go on a cloudy, rainy, stormy, snowy day. They wanted to wait for low wind, high visibility. Okay? Um, I don't feel like you have low winds or high visibility right now. I feel like you got the opposite, low visibility and high winds. Um, and, and so this moon card is kind of like, we know we're getting very close to the summit, but it's really dangerous for you to keep running as fast as you are. Right? So we either need to slow down and stay balanced and... Um, and stay focused and be cautious, right? Or we just need to camp here for a couple days until things clear, okay? Because you, you don't want to make the wrong move. And right now it may feel like there's, it's, it's hazy. I can't really see what's in front of me. I don't know where to put my feet, okay? The moon card is a situation where things are not what they appear. Could be that we're getting some incorrect information. It could be that there's just something going on with the magnetic field and our compass just isn't working right today. Okay. Uh, it could be that there are other things going on with you. I don't know if you're having some confusion or some doubts about this final step of your path, you know, the final uh, push to the summit for you. But I want to look at some more cards, obviously, and see. But the moon card, <clears throat> I should say the moon card does show promise because there is that little sun at the bottom, right? And it's being pushed up by that beetle, by the scarab, right? The symbol of transformation, the symbol of rebirth. Um, it could be that you are at, um, it, it's kind of the, there's a ceiling for you right now. And it may be a cloud ceiling, right? Maybe a dense fog right here. It's because you have to make some changes inside of you before that, those clouds will clear and that beetle can push that sun and you'll be able to see exactly where, where you're supposed to go. So I feel that there is something that um, needs to happen internally, right? There's some sort of transformation. We've, we've hit a, a particular ceiling and we need to take that next step inside so that we can get the clarity outside, okay? So let's put this into some context. I really, I'm, I'm loving these cards. Let me know what you think about, about the Millennium Thoth Tarot down here underneath the surface. Now we've got three major arcana energies. This is something very significant for you. This is, um, this I think is a, is a spiritual quest that you're on, but I think there are tremendous um, kind of earthly practical side effects of this, you know. Um, this could really be the, the kind of um, the pinnacle uh, spiritual experience for you. But I think it's also has something to do with your, um, I don't know if it's career maybe, but it's like your life's purpose. Right? It's what you really are. You have this tremendous ambition. And underneath the surface, we've got this lust. And this lust, this strength energy, really is, is part of what I was saying before about how you've, um, you've turned up your light. You know? You're not dimming your shine. Uh, and this is the card that confirms that. Because I feel like you have, you have um, gotten in touch with who and what you really are. What your, what your skills and talents, what your passions and powers really are. And it's a matter of utilizing those. And so maybe this is a process that we've started and that we're still, we need to make that final step there, right? Because this card is about magic. This card is learning that all your weaknesses, all those flaws you thought you had, no. Those are strengths. Those are talents. Those are skills that you need to help you get to the summit of this particular part of your life, whatever it is, right? Um, this card is also about the, the passion for life, right? The courage and the bravery to go out and live the life we want. Enjoy the things that we enjoy, you know? Um, but again, it's this idea of balance, right? Because that devil energy, remember, it has the tendency to become a, an aggressive drive or a pleasure drive, okay? And, um, 
That's something that the Lust card can also do, is that it's kind of the combination of both aggression and pleasure, right? Um, and so we have to really, we have to be aware of who we are and we have to, we have to be in control of our, our powers, right, of, of this energy, rather than um, kind of being at the mercy of it. Okay, so this shows someone who has tamed the beast, right? And we want to tame that beast in ourselves rather than have that beast kind of lead the way. Okay, and that's what I think is really, you're able to, to direct the goat exactly where it needs to go um, using your higher discernment, using your will um, and your strength uh, and your courage to do it. But this is, I think, really, we're beginning to know ourselves. We're beginning to realize what we like again. I feel like there's a time in your life where you weren't sure what you wanted, what you liked, you know? Um, so many, what are your favorite foods? You're like, oh, I don't know. I guess I like everything. No, let's find out. Let's get down to it, right? What do you like? And not just about food, right? Um, and everything. What kind of things, what, what brings you happiness and pleasure? Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, creatively, what is it that you want? What is it that you like? What is it that you don't like? Yeah. Um, in this, this effort to know ourselves, <clears throat> we gain um, tremendous insight into what we are, um, what we're kind of geared for in life. You know, we get the sense of what we should be doing based on everything I know about myself. What am I good at? What, what is the path that really feels right? Because remember, I, I always say this, that our destiny, our fate, our purpose in life, it's not about what we're doing, but about how and why. Okay. So if we know ourselves, um, then anything that we do, if we're doing it for the right reasons and we're doing it in the right way, that is the fulfillment of our destiny. But it doesn't matter necessarily what those activities really are, provided we have the connection with the, the how and the why, right? Let's keep going. I, I like the Lust card very, very much. This is really, the Lust card is kind of this, um, it's this feeling of, of being very powerful. This is the feeling that we are just infinitely large and I can just reach out and pluck a star from the sky and pin it to my lapel. You know, that's the kind of grandeur that we are feeling right now. And indeed, I like that for you because I feel like you need that because for so long you've kind of had the opposite of that. You know, I think that maybe in your life uh, you've at times felt very small or you felt uh, n invisible, even like not seen. Yeah. Let's keep going. The Lover's Card, more major arcana energy. Wow. Um, that's, that's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, especially since I spent the good part of the morning shuffling and consecrating this deck with incense and um, a, 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 an admission here. You're not the first sign that I've used this new deck of cards with. Uh, I did a Sagittarius reading just before this, so you're, you're the second one, but that's okay. Uh, my point is, that it's been well shuffled, right? So this is kind of, this is kind of giving me a little bit of the chills here uh, with so many major arcana cards, especially the lover's card. Because the lover's card is, is a time in our life, since it's in this kind of, this position here, makes me wonder if, if you've always made the right decisions in your life. You know, the lover's card, we think this is the two people that should be uh, just inspired to commit to each other forever and ever and ever, right? Um, I wonder if you in your life have found yourself committing to things um, that maybe weren't really for you, whether it's through peer pressure or through a sense of obligation uh, or something else that we have found ourselves really committing ourselves to, getting entangled with, marrying ourselves to things that then kind of create this disaster and we've got to figure a way out of it, right? So the, um, especially with the devil energy and with the lover's card, it kind of feels as if you're refusing to commit yourself to anything that, that you don't want to. That's not right for you. Why would you, you know? But since this card's in the past, it, it leads me to think that we have, um, we have not always made the best choices for ourselves or that we have, we have gotten involved with things or committed to things um, for reasons other than we were absolutely just infinitely in love with that thing, 
right? It could be people, could be jobs, could be, you know, locations, whatever, whatever, right? This isn't necessarily the card of romance. It could be. And maybe this is saying that, look, we've, you know, we've, um, we've dimmed our light for the sake of other people for far too long. That we have, we've committed to, to other people because that's maybe what they wanted. Maybe at the time we weren't sure what we wanted, but we did that, right? So I think there's now this, um, there's this awareness that you're not going to commit yourself to anything unless you feel that inspiration, right? This card is all about getting hit with that, that Cupid's arrow, and we just are infinitely and madly in love with something or someone. Could be an idea, could be a path, could be a goal, you know, could be a way of life. Um, that there is just this passion, and it really is something that brings out this lust card. Um, and of course, brings out that devil card too, brings out that that driving force, yeah. So as much as I think that this is an awareness of how we haven't always made the right choices, I feel like this is also saying that you're on the right path now, that you have made the right choice now. And whatever this mountain is that you're climbing, um, the moon card, to me, the appearance of the moon card now, look at this. If we've made this right decision this time, or we feel, we think, we thought we had, right? That we had this inspiration and we committed to something and that's why the devil is charging up the mountain. Then comes that mist, that haze, that confusion, that kind of dark, shadowy, nighttime place where we feel like we're very close to the top, but why is there suddenly now this confusion and this darkness? It starts to make you question, uh-oh, did, did I make the right choice? Right? It brings us back to questioning the choice that we made, especially since I've kind of, you know, I've been known to do it. So maybe this is another instance of me doing that. Um, I don't believe that it is. This is major arcana and all, this is all major arcana energy. And more major arcana. Holy smokes. Uh, I'm going to try not to curse today. Uh, no expletives. This is a family program. Uh, but holy smokes, high priestess, yeah, this is, um, there's this intuitive understanding that this is the right path for you. So it's kind of, uh, and it's very interesting with the moon card, this is the new moon. This is the, um, the narrowing lunar aperture, right? This is the, the, the waning moon. The high priestess is the expanding psychic aperture, the waxing moon, the clarity, right? We're beginning to see our eyes are beginning to adjust. So, I feel like what Spirit is saying is don't run up the hill, don't charge up the hill with your devil energy and get yourself into some sort of calamity. But also, don't get so frightened by the appearance of this darkness, of this confusion, or these strange images, and run back down the hill thinking that this isn't my hill, right? Um, wait for your eyes to adjust, your psychic eye, your third eye, right? Wait for your eye to adjust. Uh, because the psychic energy is, um, we, we are looking for it to wax, for that aperture to open up, for the eye to open, and we'll perceive what we need to perceive, okay? And we'll perceive where, what the delay is or what the blockage is, okay? So this is a card that says trust because the, the insight is coming, okay? There will be an increase of, of insight and knowledge and revelation here um, of an intuitive nature, Okay, so far we've got all major arcana energy. Spirit really has something pretty important in store for you. Let's see what the future position card is. Prince of Cups. We're our first non-major arcana. I thought we were going to really do a full house here and, and get all these cards on the Path of the Dove as majors, but that's all right. Prince of Cups is, is perfect. Because the Prince of Cups is air and water. Right? Air and water. So there is that inner truth that fixed water energy that we are, um, we are confident in the way forward. We are, we are confident that we are expressing ourselves exactly how we, we should be, right? So to me, this is a certainty. To me, this is a trust in the flow, a trust in the, the, well, the intuition, um, a trust in the, um, the result of the reflection that we reflect on ourselves, we reflect on our path, and maybe this is just a moment for us to stop and kind of realize how far we've already come. Take a little break while we wait for the clouds to clear. Maybe the moon card, the new moon anyway, this one, 
is us just running into a little bit of doubt. You know, and it's kind of like, well, it's like Wiley Coyote, right? Running across the ravine in midair. And as long as they keep going, as long as Wiley Coyote keeps running and looking forward, not going to fall. Going to get that roadrunner, right? But as soon as, as soon as Wiley stops, looks around, freaks out, falls to the ground. Okay. And I kind of feel like that's, that's just it, that we are, um, we're running so far and we feel uh, so fast. We feel that if, as long as I don't stop, then nothing bad will happen. But as soon as I stop, then I start to get these kinds of this moon energy and I start to doubt. I start to wonder. I start to question. I start to, um, disbelieve. I kind of lose faith or lose hope. And then we're going to fall to the ground. Wiley Coyote style, right? So I can understand your, your kind of desire to just run, to keep charging up the hill. But it's very treacherous up here. One wrong move and we're going to go tumbling down rather than choosing to turn around and, and walk back. So it's better that we, we sit where we are and, um, and face those fears, face that last, like the guardian of the threshold here, face that last scary thing um, that force of doubt and um, be aware that we might feel as if we're going to fall. We might feel like running back down the hill, but we sit and we endure it and we, we face that fear, whatever it is for you. Okay. And it might just be that fear of, of kind of doing the wrong thing. The fear of, I made a mistake, right? But the Prince of Cups is someone who is living authentically. They are expressing themselves in, they are, uh, they are expressing their truth. They are authentic. They are, um, uh, they are <clears throat> um, emotionally intelligent, right? That they, um, they're sincere and they are, they're, they're not turning it down. This is someone who is expressing their truth. They are using their voice. They have found their voice. Okay. And they are, um, I, I think it's a, it's very sensitive emotionally. Um, but that's kind of the risk we have to take. If we're going to express ourselves, f you know, fully and really, um, kind of wear our heart on our sleeves in, in a way, um, it's going to also make us kind of vulnerable, kind of, you know, um, susceptible and sensitive to energy coming in. Okay, we've opened ourselves up and we're letting ourselves kind of spill out into the world because that's, you know, um, that's the creative way. It also leaves us kind of open and raw to the world. Okay, um, but this is, this is kind of the way forward. So I wonder if with this card, uh, if there is a kind of emotional truth that you need to express, if there is something within you that needs to find its way out into a piece of music, into a prayer, into a poem, into a short story, a novel, um, into uh, a conversation with somebody, right? Because I feel maybe that there is something, there's an, an emotional situation going on that you have really, that we're, we're needing to confront. And not, not confrontational, but we need to deal with it. Maybe that is part of this moon energy that's kind of clouding the way here is that we just need to be able to express something to someone. Maybe it's to, you know, we, we finally tell our family like what we've been doing for the last few years and, and you know, the success that we're going to achieve. Because um, I kind of feel that there's a secret here. I kind of feel like there's something you need to say to somebody or there's like you kind of want to finally show somebody this is who I am. This is, look, this is, this is the real me, right? Uh, let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. And we'll put it down right here, our very own Kelly Kapoor right on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. If you have a prediction, put it in the comments. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. It really helps out the channel and I really appreciate that. Um, also let me know what you think of the, uh, this tarot pack. I, I kind of, I'm digging it. I like the, I like the artwork. I like the colors. I think it's really vivid. I maybe wish it was a little bit brighter, but you know, 
Beggars can't be choosers. So anyway, um, general energy, path of the serpent, eight of wands. It was quite interesting because we have the eight of wands as the general energy card for the Sagittarius reading. So you might want to watch the Sagittarius reading as well. I kind of feel that this is a natural kind of continuation from that. And I should tell Sag to come and watch the Capricorn reading. But the eight of wands is this... Um, we're kind of, and this is maybe with the Prince of Cups too, very related. Because the Prince of Cups, again, it's that the artist that is finally, finally becoming their true selves, finally doing the kind of art that they want to do, finally expressing themselves in that way that is just full and complete, and it's just, they've found their voice. And I think that this is you really finding your voice, right? Expressing your, your energy, your light. And we say that you're not turning down your light, right? You're not dimming your shine. Um, so we're turning up that light, and what that light does is shines through the prism of our souls and out into the world in many different colors, right? So this is really you uh, expressing yourself in every area of your life in many, many different ways. That You've turned up that light so bright, and it's shining out of you. And it is, uh, it's falling on, on everything. So uh, everything has kind of taken on a particular hue. Everything in your life is, is kind of a different color. You know what I mean? Um, that a little bit of you is now in, how do I even explain this? Your light is falling upon everything. So everything that you're involved with, everything that you interact with, um, receives a little bit of you. Does that make sense? Um, that you have just some sort of a subtle influence on everything. Um, maybe a larger influence. Maybe this is you really um, wanting to, to have a say in everything. It's kind of like, in a, in a way, this card makes me think, like, now you've got an opinion about everything, right? It's kind of the words that I'm hearing. Because before, it's kind of like, well, what kind of foods do you like? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'll eat anything. Now it feels so different. Now it feels like, you know, what kind of food do you like? You're very specific with what you do like, what you don't like, and the things that you do like, you like in a very certain way. You know how, exactly how you want it prepared, you know? And that's what it feels like. I don't think it's that, you know, meticulous, but it might be. But I feel really that this is you expressing yourself what you like, what you don't like, what you want, what you don't want, and making sure that everything you interact with, um, is, is just the, the right shape and size for you, right? That it, it fits in your soul, that you like it, that it's, it's meant for you, okay? And this, so this is a lot of creative energy. And again, it feels like in everything you do, a little bit of your light is influencing those things, that you bring that light to the table. When you walk into a room, you're there, you're not invisible. You're influencing the aura of the room. Okay? And that's kind of the Prince of Cups too, right? Always being able to, this, this creative watery energy, this emotional energy is flowing from us and it's going to influence everything that we come in contact with in subtle ways, you know, maybe in, in more obvious ways too. But I feel like this is really, this is really new for you. Yeah, maybe the last few months kind of new because we've been talking about this for a while with you, Capricorn. What's in the environment here? Queen of Wands. Um, <clears throat> so with the Prince of Cups and the Queen of Wands, there could be an older female energy in your life that we have to have this kind of talk with, that that um, we're kind of we're we're trying to show our true selves to, or that we we wish that they could see us for who we really are, or that they you know something like that. I feel is part of this Queen of Wands energy for you, but in the environment, I feel like this is really you out in the world, just being you, like standing up for yourself, being, you know, walking into a room and like, um, you know, you're fashionably late and you walk in with a lot of pomp and circumstance and everybody's like, oh, Capricorn's here, you know? And like, wow, I never noticed them before, you know? It kind of feels like there's this new kind of, con your head is just held a little bit higher and um, we're walking a little bit taller now. And I find that this is just, this is really, really neat good. I mean, this is powerful energy. And I think you really are commanding the room. You're commanding your life. Um, I also want to emphasize the balance, that we haven't seen that yet. So sometimes the Queen of Wands, if we think of it in terms of that devil energy, 
Uh, it's someone that is, you know, it, it could be an expression of the aggressive drive, of the pleasure-seeking drive, right? Uh, but the Queen of Wands is also someone who's very creative, right? And I really, I want to see, I, I want the next card to be a card of balance. Let's see what, and this would be the sort of obstacle. No, Princess of Cups. Um, the obstacle here, I think, is, well, it's not really much of an obstacle. Uh, I think the obstacle is, is us being aware of the signs and the symbols and the synchronicities around us. Um, so the Prince of Cups has to be very receptive to what's going on in the, in the physical environment. And I feel like this is really important for you. This is the way forward. Because it, right now it feels like we kind of have this fiery energy out in the world. But internally you have to be very sensitive and very receptive and very authentic. Which means listening to what the Spirit is telling you. Okay, learning to see the signs and the symbols so that we can um, figure out what this moon energy really is trying to tell us. Let's, let's just put the final card out, Seven of Cups. Yeah, Seven of Cups is, um, well, it's not a bad card. It is a card that we have to be aware of, okay? Because to me, it feels like it's that, it's that pleasure-seeking you know, it's kind of like we, we have this, just this surge of confidence now and um, it almost feels that we can, we can do anything and we enjoy it so much that we just want more and more and more, uh, which is, is good, is wonderful, right? But we need to have that balance. So it could be that we are so close to reaching the summit of something, but now we're in this cloudy, hazy moon energy. Maybe we're mistaking this for the goal. And maybe we have to sit with this and we have to really invoke that Princess of Cups and, and be receptive to the synchronicities. Remember the High Priestess. The, is, the High Priestess is in this position of receptivity. Okay? And I feel like that psychic light is growing. That aperture is widening. Right? That third eye is opening. And you're going to be able to see the reality because maybe we feel like we're already at the summit and now we're just living it up. You know, we're already at the... Um, you know, like the after party or whatever, you know, we're already celebrating a minute. We might, we might get this realization that, oh, okay, this, this was just like one of the temptations of the Buddha, right? Or of the Christ or something. And we've got to continue pushing forward. And it was, it was fun. This was, this was cool. Um, but this wasn't the goal. This wasn't the, the summit of the mountain. Okay. So the seven of cups is, is quite interesting as the, the final outcome card. I don't think it's a final outcome. It's just kind of the the trend of the energy, and maybe this is maybe this is showing us um, what is what is beyond the mist. Okay, especially when we have this Queen of Wands, and it's kind of the the life of the party, and we're we're out here celebrating, and it feels really really good. But let's remember that this might just be um, yeah, it's we're celebrating. It feels good, but eventually we have to climb the rest of the way up to. To, to whatever whatever this goal is and I feel that it's a kind of spiritual um, it's a spiritual quest for you okay and this might be the the kind of the final temptation yeah very interesting a lot of really strong energy here all of this major arcana um, and uh, with all the kind of you know the fiery energy the devil car the fire over here um, we're reminded that really the key in this is to be sensitive to what's going on around you, to pay attention to the signs, um, allow your spiritual eye, you know, to open, your, your psychic sense to grow, and um, your intuition, and understand what, the, what Spirit's trying to tell you about this moon energy and, and what, the, what the next kind of final push of your journey is, that, that last push to the summit. Yeah. Let's look at the mystery card. I know I've taken up a lot of your time already today. Um, I think we need a little bit of air, don't you? We've got, we've got a lot of major arcana. We've got the water energy, the fire energy. Uh, not, a, not a lot of earth, really, except the, maybe the devil card, we can say, is a little bit of earth energy. Uh, but still of that spiritualized kind. I feel like we either need some concrete earth energy, some pentacles, or we need some swords. Let's see. And we've got a knight of wands. Um, we got a knight of wands, and I feel that the knight of wands is us really 
it's kind of a continuation of this card, right? It's kind of that we've gotten control over our creative drive. We've gotten control over our, our, our beast, our, our, um, um, our, our ambition and, and our, our force and our fire, right? The Knight of, of Wands is the harmony and balance that we have to have internally. We trust ourselves. We keep the momentum going by the horse and the rider, right? The horse and the rider being one. And that really to me is suggestive of this, that we have to, we have to hold the reins and we have to kind of lead the way, but we've got to trust in the horse. We've got to trust our physical nature. We've got to trust our instincts. So to me, it kind of is like um, it's the combination of instinct and intuition, which are sort of the same but sort of different. But when they're both functioning together, it is this, I, I think, this perfect perception of, of truth and reality. So in a way, we are keeping the momentum um, and continuing going up the hill, and maybe that's really the name of the game. Right? Because we said before that as long as we keep running, we're not going to get stuck in this haze of the moon card and then fall down like Wiley e. Coyote, right? Maybe Wiley e. Coyote is onto something. Just keep going, right? Just keep going forward. But we have to, of course, we have to be able to react and respond to the environment in a way that is authentic, in a way that is compassionate and loving. Um, balance our fire with our water energy. Balance our intuition with our instinct. Allow the horse and the rider to be one, one unit. Yeah. And keep pushing for it. It's okay that we took a little break here and went off on this little, and this quest, uh, side quest, or, you know, we, we took a break for this enjoyment and we had the celebration of, of sorts. But I think it is time to continue pushing up to the top, to the summit here of whatever it is that you are involved with, if it's something spiritual, creative, if it's something maybe very practical and very maybe career or something like that, something at the home, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say, a lot of major arcana today. We are going to do an extended reading if you want to stick around, link up top, link down below. New readings for Capricorn Thursday and Sunday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free, doesn't cost anything. Leave a comment, let me know where in the world you're watching from. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you think of this new tarot pack. Uh, again, it's not going to be the daily driver, I don't think, but it's, it's kind of nice, and I, I'm, I'm digging it. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Leave me a comment. Let me know that this is your first time here. Yeah. I want you all to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you, and I love you, and we're all in this together.